Okay, so by a popular request, um, I'm going to bring you some knee conditioning um, for kind of slightly later stage rehab, um, anything kind of post-operatively, um, when you're getting to kind of the three months post-op, plus sort of stage um there i have a number of uh, circus performers and athletes um ballet dancers that are have been through surgery major surgery on their knees and are really wanting to make sure that they're covering all bases particularly in a in rotational stability um so i'm going to bring you some of those exercises so you don't need much equipment you just need um, a yoga block or a cushion or a um, yellow pages or something to put your heels on um, particularly if you had a patella tendon repair so that little bit of your knee was taken to use for um, the graft for a ligament replacement etc um, but also if you've had a hamstring repair, um, so we're going to do a bit of hamstrings, a bit of patella tendon stuff, and you can pick and choose your way through this video. So starting standing up, and we're going to go into one of my favourites, which is the arabesque rotations, and we're going to focus, if we're saying that my left knee is the injured side, and so it's my standing leg and we're going to work into an open position and I've got my toes touching the floor on the back and coming all the way down and into a closed position so you can see I'm really opening through my glute med and min on the side of my hip so I'm coming into an open position and all the way into a closed position so I'm going to end up doing about 20 of these and I'm going to do it a couple of times through depending on quality and fatigue so especially with any kind of rehab and because we're um, working with the toe on the floor and I'm not actually that far tilted um, it's not actually a major test of balance it's actually more working into that hip okay so all the way open and all the way closed as I say you're going to do a couple of lots of 20 of those depending on quality everything's about quality with rehab so all the way through okay I will let you keep on going through those you've probably done about 20 whilst I've been chatting and coming back into the center we're going to work again on the outside part of your glutes so we're going to go into a curtsy squat so we're going to step across step behind keep the knee over the second toe and come around so that you're using this part of your butt and stepping up and coming across so we're just going to alternate so all the way really pressing through to come up and obviously the more you step across and the more you keep your shoulders and your hips square the more you'll get that butt working so you can start to make it so that you travel quite a long way okay so we're gonna again work towards endurance reps of these so into 20 of these So we're looking at the variability of our knee placement. So if you're doing a couple of times through of these with 10 each side alternating and then coming into another set of those. So um, another really nice one um, we're going to go into the hamstrings, but we're going to try and tweak the inside of the back of your thigh, so into your hammies. Um, all you need is a sofa <laughs> to hook your feet under, or a friend to sit on your feet. Um, 
and you're going to literally arms across your chest and come forward and pull yourself back in using your butt and your hamstrings okay not your lower back so it's not a question of pulling yourself back it's more about everything that's happening below the waist and you can feel that nice and strongly through your hammies you might find that they cramp if you want to do that um, because you're cramping you can actually go and fall through the range and pull yourself back up so you can work for part of the range so work for as long as you can long as you can until you fall and pull yourself back up and if you want to target the more of the inside of the hamstrings i'm just going to show you from a different angle you turn your toes in so my toes are turning in so still the same position but my toes are turning in so i'm just biasing the inside calves and hamstrings and pull myself back up or just falling out and pulling myself back in so it looks like i'm not doing that much but believe me it's hardcore okay and you only want to do about six of these maybe eight of them in a row and then do that um, about four times through four sets of it um, and you'll start to really feel that those hamstrings are working and you may feel quite stiff tomorrow another nice one for the hammies um, is also getting your desk chair um, with the wheels on the bottom or um, or a ball and it doesn't have to be a Swiss ball you can have a football um, or a rugby ball just so that you're you've got something that can roll under your feet but obviously it's easier with a Swiss ball so again your toes are turning in towards one another so I don't know if you can see but I'm like that with my toes so I'm going to place my toes together, my heels are apart, hands are on the floor and I'm going to lift my hips up and drag the ball in and out and work through this and slow on the way out so that it really gets into your hamstrings as you decelerate and so you get that control element. And you're gonna do about 12 of these and um, aim to do them three times through, three sets of those. So if you want to, you can pause this video and go on to um, your sets of those or you can do this video once through and then do it again um, and then fill in the the blanks at the end with a couple more sets so you make it more like a circuit okay so um coming on to some um slightly more yogic style um exercises so we're going to go into a lunge so again we're focusing on the the left knee as the injured side so we're going into our lunge into um and then pigeon toe in the back foot so we're in our warrior position okay so what you'll notice when you come into your warrior position and you've got an injured side um, is that you'll probably try and come out of that knee a little bit more whereas you really want to kind of sink into it you don't want your knee to go way over your toes um, but you do want to sink nice and low so that you really feel it working into your hammies, into your glutes, into your quads. You might even get a little bit of a wobble going on. That's absolutely fine. And then you're gonna come over. So everything in your lower body stays absolutely silent as you move forward and back over it. If you're feeling really cocky <laughs> and the client group that I'm basing this on will be going yeah I can do this um, you can start to add your heel off the floor on the front leg you might want to close your gate so that you can really sink into it 
and come through. When I say gait, your stance. And can you see how I'm just creeping up and you want to stay nice and low? Okay, so that is your exercise to really get the conditioning going um, to stabilize around that knee. Okay, so then we're going to come into um, some patella tendon stuff. So by now, especially if you've had a patella tendon graft, so the bit below your kneecap, you can start to come into heels on a block and then slowly, 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 slowly lower into your squat and return. Slowly, 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 slowly lower into your squat and return. Now, if you do have a patella tendon issue, you don't want to be doing this every day. You want to be doing it every third day. So about twice a week. So lower, 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 lower. And it's really important that you get the lower nice and slow. And what you might find is not, not only do you feel it in your patella tendon, which is the one below your knee, you might feel it in the one just above your kneecaps. So you're really focusing on the slow on the way down. Again, if you're feeling really cocky, we're gonna do four lots of 10 of these. Um, so if you're getting really cocky, you can come up onto your toes and really bias the left leg and come on up. Really bias the left leg and come up. And that really focuses nicely on the tendon component of your knee. Okay, so I'm not putting a huge amount of weight through this leg. It's just so that it doesn't become a balance exercise and then you lock up because you can't stabilize it. But if you aren't stabilizing it, go back to your two leg and come up. And what you'll find is if it's really, really sore, you'll try and swing away from it. So you'll end up with something that kind of looks like that. And you want it to be nice and even between the two. Okay, so, as I say, you can continue these in your own time to the desired repetitions um, that I've just mentioned. I'm gonna take you through something called hero pose in yoga. Um, and you might want some blocks for this. Um, if you're a footballer, you'll probably need about six blocks. One's to go on, under each ankle, one's to go under each knee, and one's to go under each hip. Um, and probably an ice bath waiting for you. Um, but if you're a circus performer, yogi, um, or ballet dancer, you'll be finding this, um, actually not ballet dancer, mm, uh, struggling with internal rotation of the hips, but you want to try and be able to sit so your knees are together, your feet are slightly wider, hip width apart, and you wanna be able to sit in the middle of them. So you're gonna take your block, because I appreciate not everyone can do this, and sit on the block, okay? So it just takes a little bit of the pressure off the quads, off the MCL, and off your cartilage from the rotation that's happening at your, at your knees. Um, as I say, if you're struggling with your ankles because they don't go into a point, um, you can pop a block under your ankle so you end up with a, a flexed ankle, okay? Um, or you can use a cushion. There we go, nice and comfy. All right, so. You've got all your, all your tools around you, your books, your um, cushions, etc. Um, and we can always use them, if we're not using them to actually get into the position, we can use them behind us for when we eventually go into that position backwards. So, I'm just gonna shuffle this way so you can see me fully. So, 
what I'm going to do, and I'm going to remove them for the minute, but I'll show you how you can add them, is I'm going to start walking my hands backwards until I feel a really nice pull through my quads. Okay, and you're probably going to feel it through the inside quads more than the outside quads. That's absolutely fine. You might feel it slightly more further up your quad on the outside. Um, absolutely fine. Um, we're, we're trying to target the weakest link, if you like, in your quads. So, we're going to press into the floor through the tops of our feet. Okay, so pressing into the floor, hard as you can, hard as you can, hard as you can, and release and try and go back further. Um, you can see I'm going back and I'm ending up kind of arching through my back. So I want to tuck my pelvis under, maybe readjust my sit bones slightly so that I'm not going into my lower back too much. Okay, so wherever you end up with your quads, that's absolutely fine. So I'm pressing into the floor through the tops of my feet and releasing and trying to go further. So use your breath on this. In breath out breath release go further and press 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 through the tops of your feet and release go further so if you are struggling you can either take your um, cushion or you can take one of your blocks and you can start to load it underneath so that you've got something to lie on um, now we're going to press down through our knees. So I'm pressing down into the floor through my knees and almost as if I'm gonna lift my bottom up, but it's just to create that isometric, so that pressure into the floor without changing in, in space. So pressing into the floor, releasing, trying to move further. Pressing into the floor, releasing, trying to move further. So I'm going to take these blocks away um, because I can, but it doesn't mean that you have to work within your own limits. So press your knees down into the floor, release and go further. Knees down into the floor, release, go further. Knees into the floor and release and go further. And then slowly come on up out of it, come forward, release the tension in your legs. They might feel a little bit stiff, that's absolutely fine. Shake them out and release off any remaining tension through them. Okay, so um, the last thing I want to make sure of, because this can often suffer later in the stages of rehab and it was one of the first exercises that you did which is really annoying for physios um, but you don't need a physio now okay so you've got your block you've got your heel on the block and you're now tightening up so you're going into hyper extension of your knee now, if you raise your foot up off the block, what you don't want to see is, oh, yeah, I've raised it up, and you've also got a nice lag going on in your knee. So what you want to do is tighten up, pull your toes up towards you, your big toe up. There's a slight external rotation going on, and then you want to be able to do your hovers, okay? So you don't want to lose your hyperextension. You should be feeling it through your inner range quads, okay? So that is that teardrop muscle um, on the inside of the thigh that you often see in bodybuilders. So we're getting that baby going. Any, a small amount of swelling across the knee joint will knock out that baby. So you can either use a bit of kinesio tape over the top if you're au fait with taping, um, to just give it a little bit of activation, um, get it waking up, or you can prod it with your thumb during the exercises. So you can use your thumb over the muscle to create the kind of wake me up prompt to the muscle. Okay, so by now you should be feeling that your knees are nice and solid 
and able to carry on with all the exercises that your physio has given you. You're able to um, meet all your rehab markers. If you aren't meeting your rehab markers, let me know. Let me know what the problem is and um, I'll see if I can help you. And this is how to not need a physio. Um, but of course, if you do need one, go and see one online or as an emergency. So, um, but hopefully this will get you through. Okie doke.